Rising Academy is professional development for primary and secondary. Lesson, giving a sanction. Hello, fellow teachers. We are your colleagues, J. Kribo T.K. Solomon. And Mr. Aaron T. Bala. Who will be talking to you today on this aspect of teacher skill building. We know the importance of having a school behavior policy, which is clear and the students understand. The policy only works when we all follow it. If your school doesn't have a clear policy, then you can be a leader in your own classroom by designing one. We also know that the most minimal interventions can immediately stop student behavior without it distracting the other learners. Wow. Now, teachers, today's session is more practical. Here, we will practice our skills in how we can speak to students. Over our careers, we will have thousands of conversations with students about behavior. If we get this perfect, then we will be more effective for many years to come. You are exactly right. I want you to think of a time when you have been criticized shouted at or in trouble and you don't think you did something wrong. Perhaps a car or back use a horn or raise their voice at you. Perhaps a family member is irritated with you and you don't know why. Perhaps it was a time you were in school and the teacher lost their temper with you. What feelings does this create? Hmm. This created so many feelings. Like confusion, anger, frustration, loss in trust, and aggression. You are exactly right. If you think back to a time when a teacher lost their temper with you and you don't think you deserve it, can you remember the topic of the lesson? Hmm. Oh, no. Of course not. Just what the teacher looked like and what they said. I remember the classroom, but I don't know the lesson. Exactly. In that moment, we are not focused on the learning. Our body wants to defend itself. We feel on our attack. If I was to shout at you, and then I was to try and teach you something, I could not have your attention, and you would not remember it. Sure. So... When a student does not know what they have their sanction for, it means that they feel uncertain and they are not ready to learn. In addition, if they do not know what they did wrong, then they may repeat the behavior. Or if they know what they did wrong but don't know why, it is a problem, then they may think the teacher is harsh or unfair or stop liking school. All of these things will become a barrier to them learning. In this session, we will look at how teachers can explain their decisions, explain why the behavior was wrong and why it would not help the child and then move on with the learning quickly and kindly. Master teachers are able to give a sanction when it is needed without it disturbing the class, without discussing and with their decision being accepted by the student. This is not magic. It is something that we can practice and we will develop some phrases that we can use to achieve it. Yes, 
there are some phrases that we can use to achieve it. We are going to look at the steps needed to achieve this. Remember that true praise, good relationships, a clear policy that the students understand for behavior and using the most minimal intervention, most behavior can be prevented. It is only when this fail that we need to use sanctions. But when this does happen, we will follow the following steps. One, use the student's name calmly and without raising your voice. Two, state the behavior and state the sanction calmly. Three, do not discuss the sanction. Immediately and positively state why correcting this behavior will benefit the students. The last one, return to the student later what to catch them doing something good so you can praise them. In that way, you will be restoring the relationship. The first three steps, name the behavior and the sanction. State why avoiding it will be good. Needed to be done in a short possible time. They are a distraction from learning. We do not lecture the students. We do not ask them to acknowledge or apologize for their behavior. We do not humiliate them. And we return to the lesson as quickly as possible. We do not become angry or shout. Anger is a sign of weakness and being out of control. Being calm shows that we control the classroom. There should be no pause or time for the student to challenge the teachers. For example, student error. You should not be speaking when I am speaking. This is your warning because I want you and your classmates to concentrate fully so that you can understand this and go on to be really successful. Thank you. I go to student Ansu. You need to stop touching your classmate. You have a warning. If you focus and practice this writing, then... You can be a great communicator, but I need you to let everyone concentrate on their best work. Thank you. Student Valley Moore, you have already had your two warnings for having your back to the wall. You need to focus now, and you must speak to me at the end of the class. I now want you to remain focused on your learning so that you can master this tax and be proud of it. Thank you so much. Hmm. I would like to ask you a question. Why, why do you end by thanking them when they have been disruptive? Oh, yes, that's a good question. Saying thank you can be powerful. It suggests that I know that they will obey me. It is stronger and more forceful than saying, please. But it is also polite and respectful. It shows my command of the class. I am thanking them for changing their behavior because I know that they will. It also ends the conversation. There is no room for discussion. If they need to discuss something with me, then there are many times in a school day when they may speak to me, but not why the rest of the class wants to learn. The language I have used is mostly positive. 
I want to remind them why they need to focus, not making them think they have failed or that I am angry with them. Okay, so the students will be embarrassed that the teacher has given a warning in front of their class. They may be discouraged at first. So, what do you do with them? That's a good one. It is important to give them a little bit of time. But once a minute has passed, look for an opportunity to praise them and restore the relationship again. Congratulate them on the next good piece of work. They do. Wait for them to take part in something and then smile at them. Ask them a question that you believe they know the answers to and choose them to respond and then say, well done. When they come to you for the next lesson, make sure that you are careful to smile at them as you greet them and make them feel welcome. The new lesson is a fresh start. The message is that they have broken a rule in the classroom. They have been corrected, but the teachers cares for them and respect them just as much as before. A sunshine is not successful if it creates a bitterness, scare, or angry child. A session is successful if it changes a child's future behavior. Okay. When my classroom is back, my students will not be in their habits of school. Some of them will get behavior wrong. So, what is the advice for me? I want you to remain I want you to remind them of how you expect them to be. When they forget, try and correct them privately with the most minimal intervention. If their behavior is a challenge and you must give a sanction, then it must be the sanction that is the school behavior policy. You give them sanction quickly and you focus on what they are learning. You don't give any opportunity for them to question or argue because you close it by saying, thank you. In one of my examples, a student has behaved poorly several times and I ask them to remain behind at the end of the lesson. This takes away the privilege of their free time and is an inconvenience to the student. However, it is also an opportunity for you to speak with them. We should do this with the door open and where people can see so that the child is not vulnerable. Often, there is a reason behind the behavior and we have a duty to help the student. Before challenging them about their behavior, Ask them how they are and if they are okay. If the student responds that they are fine, then you can ask them why did they behave in that way. Don't focus on what the student has done wrong. Focus on the benefits of a good education and the students being focused. Ensure that you say that you believe in them and the two of you are working together so that they can be a great man and woman. Once the sanction is complete, make sure that you wish them well for the rest of the day. Wow. There's a lot to remember here. In future sessions, we will look at how we prepare for these conversations. 
so that they are handled skillfully. We will also look at how we restore relationships with students over time. When behavior reaches a point where it must be publicly challenged in the classroom, we very quickly state the student's name and behavior. We state the sanction and we state the benefit of learning. At last, we thank them. Once some time has passed, we move to restore the relationship with the student. I will encourage all teachers to take a moment to think about the most common behaviors they have in the classroom and practice the quick correction to the students that get them back learning. Joshua, you need to remain in your seat. This is a warning. You need to maximize every minute of practice of this math so that you can be a math champion and be successful. Thank you. Okay, we have some reflection questions. So, you will need a pen now. I want you to take a moment to think. Pick a behavior that happens in your class. Reflection question one. What do you actually see when the student does this and you warn them? The next question. Can you make this discussion shorter? Next. Does the student know what the problem was? Next one. Does the student know why changing their behavior will help them? The last one. Do you have a line like thank you that signals the conversation is over and we should be back to work? Great. Now, your task is to write out this short strip for explaining why you are correcting the behavior. Once you have finished saying it aloud and practice it with someone, does it sound natural in your voice? The more we practice, the better we get. The more we practice, the better we get. So, dealing with challenging behavior can be hard work for teachers. It can make us feel frustrated, stressed, and sometimes deflated. When you have had a challenging day at work or at home, it's always important to take a moment to look after your mental well-being. Yes, it is good to look after your mental well-being. Now, talking about your worries or issues with someone you trust can help you feel better about a situation. As a teacher, it is important to remember that we should not be discussing private or confidential information with a student. However, it is okay to talk about a stressful day at work with a friend. You are right. When you have had a chance to discuss an issue with a friend, you might find it easier to move on from the problem and focus on a more positive part of your day. Yes. Remember that we all have bad days. And that is okay. Reflecting on it, talking it through, and moving on can be a healthy process. Thank you for making the time to join this Rising Academy's professional development session with us today. We have been your colleagues, Mr. Aaron T. Bala. And J. Kribo T. K. Salomon. Goodbye. Goodbye.